Well, welcome back to this Reality Check Half Hour Special. Before we go any further, I want to comment. Uh, Matt Whitlock on Facebook says, This is America, Ben. The accused don't have to prove their innocence here. The accusers have to prove their guilt. Before the break, I mentioned in that past reality checks that sometimes you have to prove your innocence. And in the war on terror, that certainly is the case. Sometimes those protections in the Constitution are there so that you can pr prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are innocent when you say that you are. But before the break, we also took a look at the 2011-2012 National Defense Authorization Act. As we showed you, because of Section 1034, that bill did much more than just fund the military. It also negated many American rights protected by the Constitution. President Obama had warned Congress that if they sent him that bill, though, he would veto it. But he didn't. And it was over the New Year's holiday that President Obama signed the NDAA into law. I told you about the powers in the National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, weeks ago when the bill first passed the Senate. A reminder, now this bill allows for funding for the military, military construction, and for defense activities of the Department of Energy. But there's also a provision that gives the President of the United States the power to detain terror suspects, even if they're U.S. citizens, and hold them indefinitely without trial. Today, the White House issued a statement to put fears of what that means to rest. I want to clarify that my administration will not authorize the indefinite military detention without trial of American citizens. Indeed, I believe that doing so would break with our most important traditions and values as a nation. My administration will interpret Section 1021 in a manner that ensures that any detention it authorizes complies with the Constitution, the laws of war, and all other applicable law. The president, while on vacation, signed the bill into law, even though he has made clear that he objects to sections in the NDAA that regulate the detention, interrogation, and prosecution of suspected terrorists. So now that this bill has become law, just what power does the president now have? Well, under the provisions of Section 1021, the president is afforded the absolute power to arrest and detain citizens of the United States without their being informed of any criminal charges without a trial on the merits of those charges, and without any due process safeguards protected by the Constitution of the United States. But even as President Obama puts on the face of seeming reluctant but willing to accept these new powers, don't believe everything you hear. I want to remind you that according to Democrat Senator Carl Levin, it was the Obama administration who demanded the power of indefinite detention be placed inside the bill. And I'm wondering whether the senator is familiar with the fact that the language the language which precluded the application of section 1031 to american citizens was in the bill that we originally approved in the armed services committee and the administration asked us to remove the language which says that u.s citizens and lawful residents would not be subject to this section. Is the senator familiar with the fact that it was the administration that asked us to remove the very language which we had in the bill which passed the committee and that we removed it at the request of the administration that would have said the app that this determination would not apply to U.S. citizens and lawful residents. So here's what you need to know. How do the American people who know of this bill feel about it? Well, go to opencongress.org and see for yourself. Of those voting, only 2%, 2% support the bill. This is not a partisan issue. This is a freedom issue. If President Obama truly believed that this was too much power for the office of the president, not only would he have not asked for it in the first place, he would have vetoed the bill. Why? Because if he really believed this power for indefinite detention was unconstitutional, to the point that he has promised to never use it against American citizens, he would have vetoed the bill to prevent the next president and the one after that and after that from using that power against the citizens of this nation. And that is reality check. And so the tough question even tonight, should you trust this president or any president for that matter with your right to a fair and speedy trial, your right to know the charges against you, your right to face an accuser in court? The reality is there are bigger issues here than just indefinite detention. How about the fact that our government is already ordering the deaths of U.S. citizens and their children without trial? How that's happened when we come back.